Please. Okay. okay. We're at stop seven, which is right there, right next to the dam, right next to New Bullers Bar Dam, which sits right there. The lake on this, this, this map is one to 62.5. It's one mile to the inch, this thing. So it's a collection of quadrangles. And this, the old quadrangle had the old Bullers Bar Dam on it right there. And the Chico, the old Chico sheet had, this is also kind of, kind of uh, getting off the subject, had this fault zone running right up, up right up the canyon. But you can see they've, they've judiciously moved it. And, and I think, in fact, it, it, it is up the slope over there, this, this fault zone that's in here. Anyway, we're right here. We're in this upper volcanic unit. And I think you can satisfy yourself. If you look up there on the, on the ridge there, or on this, this, this uh, cliff, you can see some volcanic breccia. There's some bedding that you can see in the rocks. There's a dike right there that's intruded, I assume, it's a dike. It's parallel to bedding. It may be rotated sill, but there's some more bedding over in there, layering over in there of these volcanic plastic sediments. And the only reason for giving the other one a miss is because there, there are also, also epidote splotches in this rock here. Now, um, uh, that's basically the main story here. The, the, the um, rope the barriers put up by the Forest Service, because, and they were just putting it up as I said on the bus, the, uh, this fire was still burning two weeks ago when I came wow. through here last. So, uh, and there were hot spots still. And so, but they're worried about logs coming, breaking, trees breaking and coming down and so forth. So they put this uh, uh, rope up. So a word to the wise. Bring your binoculars. Don't, don't, don't get caught. We're sneaking. This is the breaking branch. Any questions? Huh? Yes. You said it's top is to the east. Right. What kind of evidence? Okay. Okay. If you drive around and go up on top here, it's another half mile, and it's not a bussable road, uh, you can see good graded bedding in some of these, these units that indicate tops to the east. I have never really seen it so well down here for some reason. But it's, it's fairly convincing in a couple of, there's a couple of examples of it up further up there. And again, you'll have to take my word for it because uh, we're not going to go there. You can come back, you've got the locality, you can come back and prove me wrong. Okay? Yes? The story question of what does the story the epidote blotches tell us? Mm -hmm. I guess the epidote blotches. I, I need a metamorphic patrolist. Tim, would you like to know? <laughs> <laughs> well, the epidotes, um, yeah, especially the mafic part of the rock, it can be transformed during metamorphism. If water is added, a lot of that can be converted to epidote and a little bit of chlorine, and so. But then, if there's more, if there's more mass transfer, more elements coming in, you can end up with the, the segregations of epitope that formed in a hydrous fluid, and and they're probably there's probably exchanging many different elements. And the scale of transfer is, is uh, difficult to really ascertain, but they're metamorphic hydrothermal metamorphic effects, very common in mafic rocks. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, can you say something about the rock nearest the pole to the left with the linear uh, blotches in it? Uh, can I say something about the rock left of the pole with the blotches in it? I think, uh, without walking over there, but, but looking at it continuing up there, yes. my guess is that it's that it's a, it was a breccia, okay. and it's now been metamorphosed. Uh, How's okay. that so? All right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, like stretched out fragments? Yeah, stretched out fragments. Or act 